Welcome to Reaper at Ruby. I'm Laura Clouveau. For the past couple of weeks, I've been brushing up on my serger skills because I wanted to make some garments from knits. I um, have discovered all kinds of kooky fabric prints online and they're pretty hard to resist. I used to do a lot of sewing with my serger. I made all the costumes for the dancing angels at church and I made all the sweater coats and all kinds of crazy things, but um, I kind of got a little bit rusty. So today I wanted to encourage you, if you have a serger or you always wanted to get one, and, or maybe like me, you used to make clothing, but you've kind of gotten away from it, let's brush off our sergers, go ahead, spring for a new one, and let's just embark on this journey together. I've started today with this pattern. It's Simplicity 8561, and we are going to make these leggings. They are super cute. There, can you see this pocket? Adorable. I'm wearing them in a different fabrication, but I don't know if I can get back far enough so that you can see. Anyway, they're really fun and easy, of course. So here's what we're going to make. They're fun and easy, so let's get started. To make these leggings today, I'm using Simplicity Pattern 8561, and um, I'm making the size medium. I've already cut all my pieces out and I've made it four times. It's always completely successful. I will use my sewing machine here and my serger in combination, and I've already cut all my pieces out. <clears throat> when I was in college, uh, my first roommate was named Gail, and whenever I was getting ready to cut out a a project, she would sit down on the floor with me across from me, and we would cut it out together. And uh, she taught me that cutting it out is half the battle. So once you have it cut out, you're halfway done. I've cut out all my pieces. I'm using this, um, this black, um, super strong, stretchy fabric that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I took a picture of the end of the bolt to share it with you. It's a great fabric to use for this. And then um, this, this kooky little cactus is from Backstitch. And that's a Facebook group, Backstitch Fabrics. And of course I like it because um, I live in Arizona where we have a lot of cactus and I love to sew. And so this is a, a succulent and he's a pincushion and there's pins and um, needles and threads all throughout the print, so I really like it. The first thing to do is we have two of these um, pocket trim pieces folded under and pressed on one long edge. And the first time I made this, I tried to do this pocket trim from the, the, the knit, and it was just too thick. Um, when I tried to sew everything together, it just kind of hung up my machine. And so I learned to choose something that's a little bit uh, thinner. So this works perfectly. And we're going to stitch the pocket trim along the edge of this side panel number 12. right along here. Boop, boop, right along here. And I'm gonna use my sewing machine for this. This piece number 12 is cut with the contrast. The side panel is cut with the contrast as well as this piece, which is number 14, the back yoke and front pocket. 
these two are cut with the contrast and the rest is the black and the pocket trim is the stripe. I'm doing view D, which is this one. And um, it's just got the contrast, side panels and the pockets and it's the longest length. There are no stirrups, there's no little bows on the side and there's no cuffs. It's just kind of a pretty basic legging. So I use pins. I know a lot of times people will use little clips and those are good too, but I'm just perfectly comfortable with pins. So I'm going to pin this edge along here, stretch a little bit to fit, and then the folded edge will wrap around in the next step. These are ready to sew. I stretched and pinned along this curved edge, and I'm gonna sew this on my sewing machine with a straight stitch. I know, shocking, right? I have made four pairs of these leggings. I've tried the stretch stitch and the zigzag, and I have just found that the straight stitch works just fine. I will sort of tug at it as I sew. Now I'm going to press this toward the binding and then fold this over to the back so that it covers up the seam. And then I'm going to top stitch it from the front. I have this wrapped around and pressed and pinned and it's ready for the top stitching. So I'm going to top stitch just an eighth of an inch in from the top folded edge on both of these pieces. Here we go, I've got my trim sewn. Looks pretty good. And here is a pro tip from Ruby. I lined this up so that the center of my pressing foot went right along the fold, but I moved my needle over a little bit. So the toe of my pressing foot was along that fold and I didn't have to watch the needle and I just knocked it over a little bit to the right and it gave me a perfect, perfect seam allowance there. And it looks good on the back too. Okay, so now we have this piece. Piece 14 is called the back yoke and front pocket. So this is piece 14 back yoke, front pocket. This pocket piece lines up like this. This is on this side and this is on this side. So you can see how it fits right there. And to form the pocket, um, right now we're just going to sort of baste these pieces together. But at the bottom edge, we're going to actually sew. So this piece is shorter, this piece is only this long, and this is the bottom of the pocket. So I'm gonna sew across here, and I'm actually gonna flip it over to the back so I can see what I'm doing. And then the rest of it just gets basted. But don't baste the pocket opening, don't baste this. <laughs> and this is gonna be done on my machine, my regular sewing machine, baste, baste, based so. Actually, I think you could sew all of it, but it just goes a little bit faster if you baste. I want to show you from the back how I've basted along these edges and now I'm going to sew along the bottom here, the bottom of the pocket right here. Here are my pockets and I have another pro tip. I am five foot six and a half. And I find these pockets a little bit deep. Um, you can imagine my cell phone going all the way down to here. Um, so if you are petite, um, you could shorten the pocket. Just cut off a couple of inches here and just sew it off a little bit shorter. And I think that it might be more successful. Now it's time to serge. This is piece 15 or the back. And since I cut it out from the bolt, I know that the inside is the right side. So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to see that this 
will fit here. So I will match up my notches and pin this, there they are, and pin this here all the way down, ready for my serger. And then I'll also pin this side, right sides together. And remember, you are working with curves. So this has to be sort of, you know, gently worked into this curve. These are pinned and ready to serge, but I have another pro tip for you. Right here is where the, um, the edge of the pocket has those extra layers of fabric. The first time I made this, I used this uh, thicker black fabric for this. And when I was serging, when I hit this, um, <laughs> it, the fabric was not advancing. And so I had a big buildup of stitches right here and the cutter kept cutting and the stitches kept sewing, but it wasn't making any progress. And so I learned to use a little bit thinner uh, fabric for the binding on the pocket. Also, I practice, practice, practice on some scraps to be sure that everything was right. And I discovered the first time I sewed that my seams were very wavy. So I reduced the tension a little bit on my threads and I also lowered the pressure on my presser foot. So my presser foot is not um, as tight to the surface of the fabric and that really helped a lot. And it's not perfect, there's still a little bit of waviness but it's a lot better. So now I'm going to serge these long edges. This sewed up nicely, it's um, it's flat and smooth and it looks really good. So I am ready to move forward. I, so my, my, um, my serger is a Juki MO-644D. It's a very basic model. It's inexpensive. It's about $300 on Amazon. All right, so now, um, so this is the front piece. And since I cut it with the right sides together, this goes here and this goes here because these are the long straight edges. So I'm going to find my little notches and you know, when I was start, just starting to sew and I would cut around those little diamonds, my mom showed me very early that you can just make a little clip. So there's one clip for one diamond and two for two diamonds. And that's just so much faster and easier. Anyway, I'm going to pin down this long edge and serge these seams and I'll be back. It occurred to me that when I showed you the first seam, I showed you on the black side, but I think um, here against the print, against the whiter fabric, you can uh, see that serge seam a little bit better. Now we're going to match up the, the crotch seam here this to this for each leg so each leg is independent right now and right sides together we're going to match up our notches like this and so from the crotch down to the ankle i turned one leg right side out inserted it into the other leg and then surged up this uh, u-shaped seam here to join the two legs together and also this seam right here in order to be sure that um, this matched right here i basted it on my sewing machine first and then i surged it so now i'll turn this pull this right side out Learned. See how it looks. There's the front. There's the back. That looks good right there. Really good. And now I'm going to hem the bottom. I've done this several ways and um, I found that if I tried to serge the bottom edge first, it would stretch. And then when I tucked it in, it was bigger. And anyway, I've discovered that the best way for me is to just turn it under about an inch and pin it and zigzag it on my regular 
sewing machine. So I will do that and then I'll be right back. When I sew the hem, I sew it from the inside. So I'm placing the leg opening, the ankle opening right here. Can you see? Here's the hem. You can see the little zigzag as it crosses over the white area. And that's why my pro tip is I would recommend starting and ending on the black so that um, you won't have any, you know, a double line of zigzag that you might, might want to um, disguise or conceal. Next is the waistband and we are almost done. Actually, this is called the yoke, the yoke front and the yoke back. I know the inside is the right side as I open these. So I'm going to match up my notches and sew the sides together. One is a little bigger than the other. I forgot if it's the front or the back. Okay, the front is a little bigger than the back. So I'm going to serge the sides. The instructions on my pattern describe um, in, uh, using an elastic. And I tried that the first time that I made this pattern and it was kind of a struggle. My fabric is um, strong enough to stay up without any elastic. So the next thing I'm going to do is fold it in half like this. I'm going to match up all my little notches and my seams and then I'm going to press and then I'm, then I'm going to baste these two pieces together along the raw edge. My yoke is ready my yoke slash waistband. So I'm going to match up the notches and pin it with the yoke on the outside, pin it all around and then serge it. I have this all pinned, but you can see that I will be stretching as I go, as I go around. See, there's a little bit of fullness that I will have to manage as I um, surge around the waist. And the waistband slash yoke is done. I will press this and try them on. I'll be right back. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.